Hi, and welcome to Straight Shot Radio. My name is Johnny Slick, and I'm the owner and head coach at Straight Shot Training. So I wanted to speak to you all today about rest, because recently I took a week off from training in between two training cycles that I was doing. So typically, if I do a 6 to 12 week, depending on what I'm working on, cycle of training, I'll take an entire week off before I start something brand new. This allows me to fully recover from what I just wrapped up doing, uh, mentally and physically prepare myself for the next cycle coming up and to make sure that uh, I'm not going to be sore at all from the last cycle going into the next cycle of training. So this might be uh, going from training more for muscle mass or muscle size to training more for strength or the reverse or going from a period of gaining muscle mass to a period of uh, losing body fat and you, it's nice to have that break week in between. Well, I used to not be like this. Back in college when I really first got into lifting and working out, I would only take two weeks off a year. I would take one week off during the fall semester during finals. I wouldn't lift during that week. And I would take one week off during the spring semester during finals. And that was it. I would take two weeks off a year. I trained 50 weeks a year and I would work out five to six days a week during that. Uh, those 50 weeks a year. It's a lot of training time, a lot of training hours. The thing is, I wasn't as fast as I am now. I wasn't as strong as I am now. I didn't have the muscle mass I have now. So I didn't quite understand how important rest was in my program. I knew I needed rest days in between my lifting days. So I would alternate lifting and cardio or alternate muscle groups, upper, lower uh, splits, things like that. But taking a full week off from training made me anxious. I, I couldn't deal with not working out for a week. And it wasn't even so much as, I mean, I love working out. I liked being in the gym, but I thought if I don't work out, I'm going to lose muscle mass. I'm going to gain body fat. I'm going to get slower with my running. I'm going to get worse at the gymnastic stuff I was doing because I was trying to do everything all at once back when I was doing CrossFit. And I, I couldn't rest. It made, me, it, it made me nervous to take that time off because I thought I'm going to lose everything I've worked for. So as I've gotten more uh, advanced in my, my own training and I've learned a lot more as a personal trainer because this was when I first got certified as a trainer, uh, you know, 11 years ago. The more I'm, I'm in this field and studying this stuff, the more I'm telling people to take a week off. And now recently I'm been, I've been telling people to take, like, take two weeks off, which seems strange to hear from a coach that, hey, you need to, hey, you need to, to not come into the gym for a week. I don't want to see you for a week. Sounds weird coming from a personal trainer, but I've really embraced this, especially in the past two years of taking extended rest periods uh, since I've gotten into strongman because I've realized that you don't lose any strength and you don't lose any muscle mass when you take a week off. So recently, I took a week off in between two, uh, two programs I was doing, just like I mentioned in the beginning. And when I came back and I started the next program, I was kind of ramping into that week. Weights were moving up a little bit. It's getting used to the, the different style of lifting, lifting I was doing. Well, the, at the end of that week, I ended up working out outside and it was really hot out. I had an allergic reaction to the heat. I ended up uh, covered in hives. Uh, the next week, I know some of you at the Y saw me. I looked like I had leprosy. Uh, I was at, I stayed home for two days. I had to either be asleep or sitting in a bathtub full of cold water and baking soda in order just to not rip my skin off because I was itching so bad. So I took that whole week off from lifting as well. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to training the following week, I had taken in those two weeks off, one that was a scheduled week off. I had kind of ramped myself back up in that next week, and then I just to take another week off uh, whenever I was sick. So in those three weeks, I had taken off completely for two weeks. And when I came back to training, it was like I hadn't, uh, I, I hadn't stopped training. I, I was just as strong. I had just as much muscle mass. I didn't feel any weaker. My lifts were still moving the way they were supposed to move. I didn't feel like I'd forgotten how to lift in two weeks. Everything was still the same when I came back. So I'm, I was used to taking a week off, but taking those almost two weeks, almost two and a half slash three, if you count that week, I was kind of ramping up in that other program. I got to thinking, man, you know, I've in the past two years taken lots of weeks of rest in between training programs, but you know, what physiologically is happening in two weeks that makes it that I'm, I'm not losing any strength, not losing any muscle mass. I'm not getting, I'm not forgetting how to lift. You know, I, I wanted to look into the science behind extended periods off between exercise. Cause I knew, I always knew it. Well, always in the past, maybe six, seven, eight years, 
I've embraced deload weeks where you go light for a week or go just don't lift for a week in between uh, training phases to let your body recover and you come back stronger. So I knew there was science behind that week off. And, you know, only seven days, that's not long in between or nine or 10 days, depending on what your lift schedule looks like. Uh, but I knew a week was fine. I was like, man, this is this is crazy. You can go two weeks uh, without any drop off. So when I got looking into it, I found a study from Baylor University that I'm going to talk to you guys about in a little bit, where they had these students train for four weeks and then not train for two weeks and then train for four weeks after that. And the, the results are crazy uh, with the study. So I'll get into that in just a second. But uh, just to get us kind of started with this, uh, if you feel like you're getting run down with your current training program, or maybe you have a vacation coming up, or uh, you get sick and you've been sick for a whole week and you still don't feel like you can come back and lift the next week, I just want to go ahead and just let you know now, in the beginning of this podcast, taking two weeks off is totally fine. You are not going to lose your fitness level, especially from a strength and muscle size standpoint. You will lose some when it comes to aerobic capacity, and we're going to explain how that works in a second, but even... Even that, you're not going to lose that much by taking two weeks off. So don't stress out if you have already taken two weeks off or if you have to take two weeks off or if you're looking forward uh, towards this vacation but you're still kind of stressed out because you won't be able to train, it is totally fine. So take a week off, take two weeks off, let your body recover, come back. I promise you're going to be fine when you come back. So I first want to give credit to the two authors of the articles that I'm going to be referencing today. Uh, first one is Amy, I don't want to mess up her last name, Martu, Martuana is her last name. Uh, she writes for Self Magazine. She's a certified personal trainer. She's one of their health experts. And then uh, over here we have T.C. Luo, oh, I'm messing up his last name, T.C. Luoma. And he is from, uh, he writes a lot for Testosterone Nation. Um, I know Normally, I don't reference Self Magazine and Testosterone Nation. I normally referencing studies, but uh, these two coaches did a great job of compiling the studies uh, that I was looking at. And so whenever I printed out my notes, I was like, oh, man, I should probably give them credit because uh, they really put these things together well. So if you want access, if you want these articles, I can send them to you. Uh, just shoot me a message um, at Straight Shot Training on Instagram or Straight Shot Training on Facebook, and I can send you the exact articles if you want to read more into them because they also have the links to the studies here um, if you're really into reading the studies, which I like, but I know a lot of you all find it boring, so I'm just going to hit you with the highlights of these. So uh, Amy's article, she was talking about uh, taking two weeks off from exercise, and so was TC's article. They both were talking about two weeks off of exercise. So let's just go ahead and assume one week of exercise is not going to do anything. Uh, there's There are studies on it that show you don't lose any uh, strength, you don't lose any muscle size, the uh, losses in aerobic capacity are marginal. So let's just go ahead and assume that we're all good on one week of exercise. One week of no exercise is not going to make you fat. You're not going to lose strength. You're not going to lose your ability to uh, remember how to do lifts or sports specific exercises. And your aerobic capacity is really not going to drop off in seven days. So in two weeks, still a lot is not going to happen. In fact, your body may need it. If you've been going hard for a while, uh, let's say you've been training four to six times a week. That week or two weeks off is an opportunity to take that, that break and kind of refresh both mentally and physically before you start back into training hard again. So the first thing I want to address is the, is the mental aspect of it because I think that's probably the biggest uh, problem that people have is, this, is this, not just the perception of I'm going to lose this strength or I'm going to gain this weight or I'm going to lose this ability to run. If you are a beginner – and you're just getting into an exercise routine and you're trying to make exercise a habit, taking a week off or, or two weeks off is kind of tough because it gets you out of your routine. It takes people four or six weeks to establish like a really solid routine. So if you're taking a week, two weeks off and you just started training, that's where you're going to have, have issues because you haven't quite established that, that habit yet for yourself and you're throwing in inconsistency, and consistency, it to me, is the single greatest factor in your uh, ability to have success with a program, is whether or not you're consistent with it, because even a bad program will work to an extent if you're consistent with it. So beginners, I, I would try to get them coming into the gym. If they need to come in less, that's fine, but just keep coming in uh, if you're new to working out. The longer you've been working out, here's the nice thing, 
the longer you can take off with the less losses. Mm. So if you've been training for a long time, you take two weeks off, you're probably still going to be okay coming right back in the gym and getting back into your, your normal routine as opposed to a beginner or maybe slightly intermediate person who takes two weeks off and they have trouble getting back into the routine when they come back in. Another mental thing that happens when you take two weeks off is things will feel heavy at first and that is n- that's not anything to do with your muscles actually getting weaker. A lot of it is just wrapping your head around what you have to do to set that lift up. So you take two weeks off and you had just gotten really good with your new deadlift setup. You take two weeks off and you kind of have to remember, well, how do I set my lats? Uh, I don't exactly, this doesn't feel right the way I'm sitting back into my hips on this deadlift. My grip feels off. Like things just feel off after two weeks sometimes. Again, the longer you train, the more it's like, it's like when you don't ride a bike for a long time, you can hop right back on and get going again. Same thing with lifting. If you've been lifting for a while, take two weeks off. It's not going to screw with your your lifting that much. Things might feel a little bit heavy at first just because you're not used to it. But if you warm up really well, maybe those first couple workouts, spend a little extra time warming up, uh, you're, you're not going to have a loss in muscular strength. If you're newer and you're just learning these lifts, yeah, you're going to have that, that learning curve again where you have to kind of relearn the lifts a little bit, but it's not like you're starting completely from fresh uh, learning the lifts for the first time. So a lot of it is mental. A lot of it has to do with motivation. A lot of it is is just your perception of what heavy feels like when you come back to the gym or uh, your perception of what feeling out of breath feels like when you get back into running, if you took some time off of running. But that stuff comes back quickly. So I would not be too worried about, about it. If that first week seems a little rough, you'll get right back on it. Now, two weeks of inactivity, the the drop-off you will see is aerobic capacity or your aerobic conditioning. Think of your cardiovascular conditioning. Since aerobic exercise works your heart and your lungs, and it it if you're doing it correctly, it'll increase your VO2 max. Your VO2 max is is a measurement of your body's ability to take in, transport, and then use oxygen during exercise. So the more you train, the more efficient your heart and lungs become at delivering this fresh oxygen and fresh blood to your entire body during exercise, and then thus you have a better VO2 max score, volume of oxygen uh, uptake during exercise, maximum score, VO2 max score. So when you stop exercising, both your VO2 max and your heart's ability to pump blood efficiently, which is called your stroke volume, uh, is how much blood is pumped out of your heart per uh, heartbeat, those are going to start to decline, but the exact rate is going to vary on how conditioned you are. So some studies will show that after two weeks of inactivity, you're going to notice some changes. Uh, there was a study on athletes where they took four weeks off and they saw a 20% decrease in VO2 max. Well, I mean, that's an entire month off of training, but 20% decrease in VO2 max is very significant. You're going to notice that. There are some studies that show at the 12 day mark, there's a 7% decrease in VO2 max. So that some people, uh, higher level athletes will, will feel that you probably wouldn't feel a 7% decrease in your VO2 max uh, unless you were really in tune with how you feel when you're running. When it comes to your average gym goer though, most of the time you're not going to feel any changes until after the two week mark. So again, you take two weeks off and even if you get maybe one or two runs easy runs in, in that second week, you're not going to notice anything. You could actually take two weeks off and be fine. But if you felt like maybe you had a race coming up or something and you, and you have to go on vacation, sorry, you get to go on vacation, you don't have to go on vacation. You get to go on vacation and you take a full week off and then you only run once or twice with that week coming back, you're not going to lose any ground uh, when it comes to getting you ready for a race that you're getting ready for. So I would say the, uh, the 10 day, 10 to 14 day mark is when you're going to start noticing a t- maybe a tiny decline if you are a, a pretty uh, well-conditioned runner. So again, taking a week off is not going to be a big deal, but if you're going to take two off, just know there might be a slight decline. Good news is you'll bounce back pretty quick as soon as you get back into training. The key is when you, when you get back into training, uh, your first couple of sessions back in the gym or back running should not be at the effort that you ended at before you took your your rest weeks. It's almost like you need a couple of workouts to ramp back up and you'll have a much easier time both mentally and physically adjusting to getting back into your program after those 14 or so days off. Now that's cardiovascular capacity. Uh, Sports specific, let's say 
um, you're, you're playing a, a sport and you've been working some specific drills to your sport, that stuff is going to decline again just because of, of it's, a, it's a mental skill that needs to be practiced. And practice versus training are two different things. Uh, practice trains the mind, whereas training typically is going to train the muscles or the lungs and the heart. Uh, there is some practice involved in training, and there's some training that's involved in practice, but for the most part, if you're talking about practice when it comes to a skill, a sports skill, it's more of that is a, is a neuromuscular connection where your brain is telling your muscles what to do. When you take time off from that, your brain can forget certain patterns of what it was supposed to tell the muscles, especially if those are new patterns to you. So if you're an athlete playing a sport and you're learning something new, taking time off, you might lose a little bit of that. So maybe uh, if you are taking a vacation nearing the start of your season for your sport, if you can do something on your vacation to maybe work a couple of those patterns, nothing crazy, but just to try to remember some of those patterns. Uh, if you are working like your footwork, if you're playing uh, a field sport, or uh, if you are a gymnast and there's a couple of, uh, maybe a part of your routine, um, even just mentally kind of walking yourself through them. Uh, using techniques like um, like visual, visualization where you'll sit with your eyes closed in a quiet room and picture your routine if you're a gymnast or um, maybe, um, I don't know, let's see, maybe one of your routes if you're a wide receiver. Uh, that can help you uh, hold on to some of that stuff. The studies on visualization are crazy. There's some really cool stuff out there. Maybe we can do a, a podcast on that sometime. Getting off track here. All right, so uh, when it comes to strength training, Detraining is not going to be noticeable after two weeks. So um, think about training builds you up. Detraining would be going the opposite direction. Detraining is not going to be noticeable when it comes to taking two weeks off. There are some conflicting stuff out there when it comes to losing muscle mass. Uh, a lot of this varies on age, um, gender, what the beginning of your muscle mass, what the muscle mass look like at the beginning of the study. Uh, if you're an endurance athlete, if you're a power lifter, if you're a bodybuilder, there's, there's so many studies out there on rest uh, after exercise, uh, extended periods of exercise, and then extended periods of rest that is tricky. But when it comes to uh, the average lifter, the study that was done at Baylor University does a great job of showing what would happen to somebody if they took two weeks off after training for four weeks. So grab this here. All right, so this is uh, a sports science study from Baylor University. They uh, grabbed 20 students, all of whom were uh, experienced weight trainers, meaning just be these students already worked out in the gym. They weren't uh, brand new with no muscle mass. They weren't competitive bodybuilders, though. They were students who liked to, liked to lift. So they grabbed these students. They all followed the identical weight training program for four weeks. So everyone was doing the same lifts, same reps, same uh, tempos, obviously different weights depending on their size, but everything was the same part of the program for those four weeks. After those four weeks, they had a two-week period where they did not lift. And when I say didn't lift, I mean like they didn't do any exercise. So uh, during that two-week time period, the only thing that they kept doing that they did during the study was 10 of the students were given 25 grams of maltodextrin, which is a carbohydrate, and 10 of these students were given 25 grams of whey protein. So during the study, 20 students, they all worked out for four weeks. They took two weeks off. The entire study, they took either, half of them took the carbohydrates, half of them took the protein. So after that two-week layoff, the students then came back into training after those four weeks so they could test and see what the results were. So during, uh, during the initial training period, uh, the students who took the whey protein did slightly better. So if, during those first four weeks, which, I mean, a lot of you already know that you need to be taking in adequate protein to make significant gains when it comes to uh, muscle size and strength. We've talked before about carbohydrates. They're super important. But uh, when it comes to building muscle mass, you need protein. When it comes to fuel during exercise, you need carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are your fuel. Protein is, is how you build muscle up afterwards. You do need some carbohydrates afterwards to kind of refuel yourself. But um, what this study was showing was it was more important to get in pure protein than pure carbohydrates. That's all it was showing there. So uh, the protein group had slightly better gains. But during the two-week layoff, neither group suffered any setbacks during that two-week period. They didn't lose strength. They didn't lose size. And they didn't gain any body fat. 
it's, it's as if that two-week layoff had never happened when they came back into training. So after that two-week detraining period, the, uh, the protein group, once they started working out again, they continued to gain mass at the same rate they did during the first four weeks, whereas the carbohydrate group experienced just a slight but almost, almost insignificant drop in the rate that they were, they were gaining uh, lean body mass. So, I mean, it was, it was just statistically no change. But if you're just looking at, you know, really uh, the minute details of it, the protein group did better in the study than the carbohydrate group, just in how much muscle mass they were able to gain after the rest. But we already saw that in the first four weeks of the study, they were already gaining more mass anyway than the carb group. So it kind of stayed on the same path. So essentially the rest didn't do anything. The protein group was gaining more mass than the carb group in the first four weeks. They did it again in the second four weeks, but both groups performed the same in the first four and the second four weeks with that two week period of rest in between. So two weeks off didn't make them any fatter, didn't make them any weaker, and they didn't lose any size. So there you go. Two full weeks off, not going to do anything to you. Now, if you if you do have to take those two weeks off and you come back in and you see the drop off, if you've been training for a while, like I said before, it's going to come back faster. You just need to do it a little slower. Uh, but what would help you when you get back to it is if you could sneak in just a couple very short higher intensity workouts during that rest period. So if you find a time to get in 10 minutes 15 minutes, 20 minutes doing you know, push-up squats, burpees, uh, if you have no access to weights, uh, if you're on vacation and there's a gym and you can get one workout in, I know it seems like it's not going to do anything, uh, but it might just help you if you uh, feel like you're going to lose the, uh, the motor patterns that you've been working on in the gym and uh, it's really making you nervous that one workout maybe could be a kind of a mental uh, reset for you, uh, not mental reset, mental assurance that when you come back that everything's going to be fine. And I'm literally saying that if you feel like you have to do something, get one in and that would be that would be enough to help you hang on to that. Uh, because the longer break you take, uh, the longer effects you're going to feel when it comes to losing practice with certain things. But honestly, take the two weeks off. Uh, and if, it, if nothing else, it'll reassure you that nothing will happen when you take two weeks off. It, it, it's something that uh, I've learned to embrace now that, that I'm competing a strongman is taking weeks off because I'll take a week off before a competition. Often I'll take a week off afterwards uh, and then ramp back up in my programming after that. And then before the competition, I'm already ramping down my pro my programming or how much weight I'm doing leading up to the competition so I can be fully recovered for that day. And you know, I'm, I'm lifting the weights I want to lift and, and have the muscle mass that I want to have. So uh, it's, it's helped me understand the importance of rest and help me be comfortable with taking rest and, you know, really relaxing and enjoying my time uh, and enjoying my time with my family when I'm on vacation and not worrying so much about something as dumb as losing a little bit of strength or something as dumb as gaining a little bit of body fat or something as dumb as losing a little bit of strength. Because uh, when you think about it, like that's really not the most important thing in life. But the good news is you're not going to lose any of that in two weeks. So if you have to take those two weeks off, take those two weeks off. Uh, let me know uh, what your experience is with it because obviously you were the best um, study uh, on yourself because you know, just because these studies said something doesn't mean that your experience will be exactly the same, but I'm willing to bet that it will be the same. You will be fine taking two weeks off. If you have any questions about what we talked about today or if you would like to learn more about the Straight Shot Training program, you can head to straightshottraining.com. If you click on the Let's Get Started button there or at the free month button at the top, you can see everything that you get with a subscription to Straight Shot Training and your first month is always free. So it gives you four weeks to check out what we're all about and what we do at Straight Shot. You can also shoot me a message on Instagram using the handle at Straight Shot Training or you can find us on Facebook. Look up Straight Shot Training there. You can also email me Johnny, J-O-N-N-Y, at straightshottraining.com. If you have any issues with uh, health, fitness, nutrition, anything like that that you think I can help you out with, I would love to just chat with you and see what I can help you with. Uh, just shoot me a message. Thank you so much for listening today, and have a great week, everybody.